The waveform graph can be accessed also from the graph subpalette. And again, when we place it on the front panel, it looks very much like the waveform chart does. The difference, however, is that we see in the block diagram that the type of the waveform graph is in fact a numeric array. So again, we want to generate some data, which we're going to display in our waveform graph. This time I'm going to use a for loop. I'm going to create a constant so that we're going to generate 100 data points. Again, we'll use a random number generator. And this time, because we want to generate an array of data, I'm going to use the auto-indexing capability of the for loop to automatically take our scalar numbers and build an array of length 100 of random data. So now when I run this code, I'm immediately going to get my 100 data points displayed in my graph. The waveform graph behaves very much like the waveform chart. In fact, if we right-click, we'll see much of the same options. We'll see the scale legend. We'll see the graph palette. In addition, we have an item called the cursor legend, which we're going to spend a little bit of time discussing as well. So the way that the axes behave, the way that the plot legend behaves, and everything else is very much the same as the waveform chart. We can do similar tasks, such as assigning color to our plots, naming our axes, But we should spend a little bit of time talking about the way that the cursors work, because they're very valuable tools. We create cursors by right-clicking in the cursor box, choosing to create cursor, and selecting from one of three options. Because right now we're only looking at a single set of data in this plot, we do not have the multi-plot option available to us. However, we do have the choice to define either a free cursor or a single plot cursor. If we choose free, a cursor is created, which we can then name whatever we want. The cursor legend can be moved and rescaled. So for convenience, we can move it down beneath the graph. We can make the window wider and rearrange our columns. And the cursor I've created can be moved in one of two ways. We can use the four arrow representation to the right of our cursor window to move the cursor around. Notice as we do so that the X and Y values show the current position of the cursor. We can actually also grab the cursor and move it to wherever we want. So if we wish to do one cursor and then perhaps we want to create a second one, Again, they can be moved either with the arrows and then by selecting the other one. We can move one or more cursors together or we can drag individual cursors by activating the cursor tool and clicking and dragging. We can also change the appearance of cursors by right-clicking and choosing from a variety of options. From the attributes menu, we can choose a color as well as other options such as point style, cursor style, line style, line width, or whether the name is shown right on the graph. Also, if we were to create a cursor of the other type, where it was single plot, The behavior is very similar, except that notice what happens as we move horizontally. This cursor is tied to the selected plot so that it can only hold values on the plot. So as we drag it horizontally, we see that the cursor is in fact following our plot of random numbers.